Few animals come into the world more helpless than a human infant. The baby is dependent on an adult to fulfill every life-sustaining need. This establishes a bond of trust and dependency on adults that endures until the child matures. This is a relationship that some adults exploit in the sexual abuse of children. It's a problem right at home in our own community. Uh, last year it leveled off after some dramatic increases. For, we had 76 reports in uh, 83 and then doubled in 84 and then in 85 it kind of leveled off. We had a, a about 150 reports of uh, child sexual abuse in our county uh, last year. Uh, those are the only, only the reports, and you know we uh, can only guess how many children are being victimized and are suffering in silence. When I was approximately 12 years old, my stepfather abused me sexually. Um, it was a very hard experience. It was made me very confused. He let me think that he was just going to give me a back rub. I instantly knew that there was something wrong with it, but I also knew that it felt good. I felt flattered that he had picked me, which I think a lot of children feel. Unfortunately, when you're talking about physical abuse, a lot of people can relate to, oh, that must have hurt, it must have been terrible, that's awful, and we expect them to feel the negative things. One of the worst things about sexual abuse is dealing with the positive, because your body is made to respond, and you feel a lot of guilt from that. The sexual abuser of a child is usually a very close and trusted adult. This can have a tragic effect as the child finds that trust is betrayed and is left feeling all alone, hurt, insecure, and helpless. The sexual abuse of a child can have more forms than just the physical violation. Also, other types of sexual abuse include uh, uh, exhibitionism, uh, where adults will expose themselves to children, uh, or peep at children, or say sexually provocative things to children. There's all different kinds of abuse. It doesn't have to be uh, rape or the hands-on. Mm -hmm. Uh, it depending, uh, something less than rape can be far more traumatic to, to a child than, uh, than intercourse, so it, it depends on the child. The sexual abuse of a child can take its toll on a lifetime as the trauma of childhood becomes the maladjustments of an adult. There was, a, there was a lot of guilt around sex and my sexual feelings. I have never had a satisfactory sexual relationship in marriage. I would feel guilty afterwards, I would feel dirty, I would feel like this wasn't supposed to be. And I didn't know why. Generally trying to be wonderful and cover up anything bad, anything real, anything human. Uh, but some form of not liking yourself, not thinking you're okay, not thinking it's okay to just be the human being that you are. And a lot of depression, a lot of suicidal thinking, a lot of suicide attempts, and a lot of success at suicide. You know, there are a lot of dead adults that were victims as children. At too young an age, many children, as many as one in five, are subjected to feelings of guilt, shame, worthlessness, and blame, usually because of an abusive situation where the child has no control. I felt a very great amount of guilt growing up, um, a lot of shame, and I at some point turned to shoplifting um, as a way to cope. I uh, turned to, to smoking cigarettes, getting with the, in with the wrong crowd, um, and it was very hard. It was, it was very hard. In our community, over 90% of the children that are sexually molested are molested by someone they know and trust. Next time, we'll look at just who the sexual offender is. In Klamath Falls, Steve Van Hook, Eyewitness News. The image of the child molester as an unkempt stranger lurking in the shadows offering bribes of candy bars and puppies is not very accurate. The large majority of those who sexually abuse children are people a child loves and trusts. There's not a typical stereotype. There are a number of children that come from uh, uh, single-parent families where they're uh, molested by uh, an extended family member. Uh, there are a lot of children who are molested by uh, older siblings or cousins or uh, uh, a grandfather, uncle. Uh, and then the majority of them are molested by either father or stepfather. The molesters are usually a family member or someone that you're very close to someone that you trust. And so the children trust the person. They aren't 
suspecting you when a person wants a hug or they say come into the bedroom or give me you know, a back massage. Most sexual offenders truly care about the child they are abusing, but certain factors can override that caring and leave a void that should be filled with an aversion to the physical and emotional damage inflicted. The use of drugs and alcohol can lower inhibitions normally restricting such behavior, or perhaps there's feelings of insecurity manifesting a misapplied they assertion have, of power and, control power and control through the sexual conquest the of a and, child. Uh, they might not be getting those needs met at work or with friends. A lot of them are isolated, so they control and get their power needs met in the family. Uh, a number of our uh, offenders were molested themselves as children, so this is a way for them to kind of get some mastery over what happened. And a number of them are just turned on to children sexually, and uh, all these other things are secondary, but uh, the primary thing is that they are sexually aroused to young children. You know, sex abuse isn't so much a sex abuse as a power abuse. It's not so much a sex act as a power act. The sexual abuser gains control of the child through use of a trust relationship. There are other tools in the offender's arsenal as well. Uh, a lot of bribery. A lot of times offenders will give kids, uh, either bribe them with uh, things like money or toys or uh, other material things, or they will bribe them with affection. Uh, so there's, there's a lot of different ways that offenders gain control over their kids. I fantasized about this wonderful big male person that would come into my life again someday and find me irresistible. Eventually, a sexually abused child grows up and gains insight into the offenses she or he suffered. As an adult, they can reflect on the violation and express the resentment they only sensed as a child. I've heard a lot of them say that they are teaching their children about sex, that they're going to show their daughter the way it should be now so that she knows how. Uh, and I, I think that there's a lot of fooling yourself about they don't really know what's going on and it makes them feel good too. You like it. You are not any more important than any other person that you are touching and you don't have the right to put your needs above everyone else's. But you need to get help. You need to open your mind up and really ask yourself, is this the right thing that I'm doing for my child? A sexually abused child is a boy or girl living a sad life under the control of an adult abusing a trusted relationship. Tomorrow we'll look at what's being done to break the cycle of silent suffering. In Klamath Falls, Steve Van Hook, Eyewitness News. In the prevention and treatment of child sexual abuse, a main priority is to get control of the offender. In Klamath Falls, Wednesday's Child is a program that works with both the abused and the abuser. Locally, we're trying everything we can to help offenders to uh, understand what they've done and uh, stop the, the offending behavior. Uh, the, a large part of our resources go towards dealing with the denial uh, that offenders have uh, bef uh, when they come into the program and even during the first six months or a year. Uh, and that denial is what has really enabled them to keep on doing because most of the, the offenders in our program, and I'd say all of them, really love their children. Uh, it's not like a uh, child molester or rapist who grabs somebody off the street. There usually is a, is a pretty strong relationship. Wednesday's Child has special programs for the victims of sexual abuse. I would like to explain what Wednesday's Child has given to me. Um, first of all, it has instilled the knowledge in me that the sexual abuse was not my fault. And it has given me the knowledge that I am a human being, that I'm not somebody else's doormat. And Wednesday's Child sends volunteers into local schools to take a message to kids that it's okay to say no. We want them to have a good feeling about themselves. And so that's one of the things that we work on is their self-concept, that it's their body, that they can say no if it's something that makes them uncomfortable or something that they don't like, that they should say no that they should tell someone if something is happening, that it's good to tell someone that if something has happened to them, it's not their fault. During presentations in the schools, it sometimes becomes evident that a particular child may be a victim of sexual abuse. Sometimes behaviors, they may not be watching the program, they may be distracted doing something else, uh, they may be uh, very acutely watching us all of the time and 
usually what happens is the child comes up to one of the volunteers after the program and says, I need somebody to talk to. And one sexually abused child, now an adult, offers some words of advice to any children that may be listening. I guess what I would say is you have rights. You are a person. You may be a small person, but you are a person. And an adult is not any more important than you are. If someone is touching you or doing things to you or making you touch them or do anything that does not feel right to you inside, tell somebody that you trust. If it's mommy, if it's daddy, if it's grandpa, if it's grandma, inside you, you know who you can trust. And you tell someone that will help you do something about it because you are important. The person who's abusing you is sick and needs help. Uh, they might not know that and for sure they're not going to get help on their own. So by telling someone, you might be the reason that that person ends up getting the kind of help that they need and also stopping them from doing this to other children. Tell somebody what happened to you. It wasn't your fault what happened. There is someone who's going to help you. Tell someone about it. And if the per first person you tell doesn't believe you, tell somebody else. Keep telling until someone believes you and does give you some help. The message is simple but earnest. If you or someone you know is sexually abusing a child, please get some help. Call Wednesday's Child today. In Klamath Falls, Steve Van Hook, Eyewitness News.